Hey, this video is for all my entrepreneurial friends or those of you that are thinking about becoming an entrepreneur. Maybe you're a professional service firm, maybe you're a high performance coach, or maybe you're a tech entrepreneur. This video is for you because today I'm going to talk about legal structure. Now, some of you know I'm technically an attorney, but I am not giving you legal advice. I just want to give you food for thought today. So this last week I was at a mastermind in Puerto Rico and the question that I got a lot from people was, what is the best way to structure my legal entity? And so I wanted to talk to you guys about some recommendations or some thoughts that you might want to consider. The first is, are you just providing services or are you going to have a big event like maybe a mastermind? Or maybe you have workshops where you have people come on site and they are on their computers doing tech workshops. Um, additionally, I want to ask you, do you plan or do you currently have intellectual property? This means, have you written frameworks for your processes? Have you written software that you sell? These are all things that you want to consider when you're thinking about how to set up your legal structures. To, the goal here is to mitigate risk. So I'm going to share with you something I sketched out on a bar napkin this last week for a couple friends. So the first thing that you want to consider is, do I have intellectual property? So my IP company may be a separate legal entity that I put all of my software and maybe any intellectual property that I have. The reason why you want to put this as a step into a separate organization is if something happens and you get sued, you don't want to lose this too. The next component that you often have is your operating company, right? So this is your company that you're typically running your business from. And then if you're going to have events, so maybe you're going to have a big conference or a big uh, mastermind, you might want to have a separate events company. So why would you do this? Well, if somebody comes to your event, you want to make sure you have insurance for that event. But what if something happens and somebody is injured at that event and they sue you, right? If this event is being housed in the event company, then they could sue this legal entity, but you're protected here. So a lot of times what you're going to do is create partnerships or relationships between all of these different entities. So they have the legal rights to use your IP. So they're like an affiliate or a partner and you have your events over here as a separate entity. So this is something you might want to consider. And again, not giving you guys legal advice, but I want to make sure that you're asking the right questions. There's all sorts of other questions that you want to ask like taxes and you know, partnerships that you have. So you really need to get the advice of a legal professional. If you don't have one in your area, just shoot me a message. I have friends all over the country that specialize in this type of work as well as technology law. So hopefully all of you entrepreneurs out there are going to really think about how you're structured, mitigate your risk so you can crush 2020. This is the type of stuff that we talk about masterminds and we hope that you consider joining a mastermind in the future.